Hey all, this is Jusser Bram, and here is my review uh, for the recently built Masurao. I'm not sure if I even pronounced it correctly, but who cares? This is one awesome kit. Uh, I'm not usually too fond of these these very skeletal type of kits, but oh this one works quite well with that uh, as you can see all black some red and a tiny bit of white uh, some dark grey and that's it for the colors uh, but nonetheless he works this paint scheme very very well uh, perhaps uh, a good alternative would have been a dark purple for instead of the red but and then perhaps the white with some silver uh, heck I'm even tempted to buy a second kit just for changing up the paint scheme because I really really like this kit uh, yeah, as I said, uh, with the unboxing it's some kind of samurai version and uh, it has uh, plenty of stuff coming along uh, for it. Um, well, but let, let's first go into the kit itself. There are some issues, there are some good things. Uh, yeah, let's first have a bit of a close up. He's looking quite good. Um, in terms of a face, he doesn't really have one that's visible. It's underneath this V fin actually, which is fairly easy to remove. And you're left with a single mono eye underneath. And actually, a faceplate, which you uh, can paint up. Uh, it's actually recommended to paint this face palette orange and then the eye white and the center of it in a red. But I tried to apply some paint, but <laughs> it's such a tiny room. And just to give an idea, that really the entire recess that's all one piece, so you, you can't have. Let's remove some parts so I can access it easily. You really have to dig all the way in there to get even some paint applied. I tried just a tiny droplet of white and it immediately, immediately smeared out. I scraped away most of the excess and I'm left with just a bit of white in there and I'm not going to fiddle again with it. I'm just going to use this uh, uh, pair of sunglasses <laughs> I'm not really sure what to make of it uh, but it pretty much covers up entirely the whole uh, face part there, you really cannot look into that hollow with this face plate on uh, which is curious but oh well uh, let's go into articulation for this guy, which is fairly good, actually it's excellent. So uh, let's start up with the top. Double ball joint for the neck, but due to the size of the head itself it's fairly limited. You can get some emotion out of it, making him stare down to the side or something like that. But otherwise than that, it's limited due to the color and, well, the very white helmet. Surprisingly, both of his antenna are movable. It's a simple rotating joint. So you can, if you want, make him look like this. Or completely up. Whatever uh, pretty much fancies your boat. Um, he also has a little bit of a gimmick uh, involving this little part for some kind of ring attack. Yes, it's entirely in clear, which is not nice considering it's uh, shown in the pictures as orange. 
and you get other orange pick parts with which are transparent so why the hell you get this one in clear I'm not entirely sure but if you move these back a bit no, hook these in it's supposed to stick like this but <laughs> it doesn't really hold on perhaps I've put it on the wrong way but uh, this is the gist of it and I think it's a very weak thing the idea is nice but I probably going to stash it away and not use it ever again um, the shoulders we, uh, there's a joint in here which allows this shoulder part to move back and forth up and down the shoulder joint itself uh, has rotation and swivel yeah leg falls off let's remove both of them just as easily uh, the shoulder this part is on the ball joint so pretty much can go anyway but looking from the rear it's not much <laughs> it doesn't look too good uh, this backpack part uh <laughs> yes long live many many poly caps <laughs> uh, which at this point only allows for some rotation of the upper arm by the way uh, the backpack doesn't move but this part is a flexible wire um, tiny issue there because you have to shove it into a hole here and it doesn't really feel too secure so you could easily lose it just be warned there right back to the arm uh, yeah, as I said rotation there is a swivel in the arm which actually can go pretty far for a single joint as you can see uh, each hand has a ball joint you have uh, several uh, hands to work with you have this uh, spread open angry hand and this spread open more relaxed hand which you can pop off quite easily and you have several other hands and one half hand I'll explain that in a moment um, you get a closed fist and you only get for the other hand the top part of the closed fist why the hell didn't they give us just that last bit so he can have two closed fists that's just, that's just cheaping out one half is there but the other half is not there I checked all the papers no there's not supposed to be one just this part which is for another closed hand and then you have to uh, fists with openings to hold onto his weapons which are very impressive but I'll show those in a moment right he has a waist joint and let's see if I can show it properly it's this entire part can move back and forth so he can look up somewhat more uh, there's a rotation in the waist ball joints for the hips and these skirt parts are on the hip joints with ball joints on of their own which can move fairly freely each of these inner skirts has a holder for one of the weapons the knees are double jointed so the effect of the double jointness isn't that impressive but still it goes beyond just 90 degrees his ankles are more impressive uh, there's a ball joint socket in here which allows for fairly free movement side to side and then in the feet itself there is another ball joint and a swivel so yeah you can really move this foot around any way you want stands fairly secure it's very tight 
And if you really have any doubts about him standing straight, you can swivel this down into here. Just for an extra secure stance, I think. It's not really explained how or what, but uh, you can do it. So he has really high heels, but it's not needed. And it limits the articulation here a bit, but that's not too bad. It do at least that way it doesn't go beyond human limits. Anyway, let's put them back together. Because, yeah. Ball joints uh, are a bit loose. But nothing that's a real disaster. So, it does stick together fairly well. Anyway, uh, let's see for his weapons. His weapons are some of the most gorgeous uh, swords uh, I've seen to date for Gundam. These two are awesome looking. Yeah, they're different sized. Uh, even the handles have different sizes. He can dual wield them or he can wield one, hold them with both hands. That's purely up to you. But I'm going to let him dual wield because he can. Let's put him back a bit more. Uh, also, of the spare parts on the uh, trace, you get this thing which uh, could plug onto his arm. Uh, I'm considering just repainting it and then putting it on uh, so it fits more because entirely white doesn't work with this. Uh, let's give him a comparison. Also from double O. Whoops. That's not uh, supposed to happen. <laughs> Hi there all. Uh, yeah. The 1.5 Gundam. Uh, just a smidgen shorter. And I already said in review of that one that that one was fairly tall. So let's put... But let's straighten them out. Just to make it a bit more fair. But... Still, <laughs> he is a lot taller than pretty much any other 1 to 144 scale Gundam. And that's not even counting in those horns. And lastly, he gets pretty much the default uh, Gundam base uh, with two different uh, parts for position. So it can be more upright or more for the flying type poses. And a razor so uh, it can go up higher. That's completely up to uh, any way you want to have this. So let's put it in there. In there. Then there is a hole between his legs. Nothing to actually cover it up sadly. Let's put it in there. You can make good use of the waist joint and the neck joint. And him going uh, off to butcher whatever it is that's normally his opponent. Uh, this was Yusep. Highly recommending this kit. And thank you all for watching.